Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Meg. I make random videos, a bit of everything, conspiracy theories, whatever you want. Comment down below what you'd like to see. I'll film it. So anyway, moving on with the video. Today I want to do something a bit different. I don't want it to be as long as my normal videos are because they can be a bit of a pain to like to watch. Who's going to want to watch me for half an hour, let's be honest. But anyway, today's video is a murder that happened in 19... In the 1940s and I watched it on BuzzFeed Unsolved and I found it I find it really interesting mainly because it happened near to where I live I say near to where I live it's it's about 40 minute drive from where I live but yeah if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe comment down below what you'd like to see next and let's get into the video so this murder actually happened in April the 13th in 1943 and a group of four boys went out with their mum into Hagley Wood and they went to look for birds nests and bird eggs. Why? I don't know. Stay out with the mum I suppose. But on this trip these boys actually went off into the woods and they found a hollow tree which was also known as a witch elm tree and one of them attempted to climb a tree to look in the hole. Actually, he thought he found an egg. Instead of an egg, it was actually a human skull. Now, these boys, I don't think they were very old. And what they did was they managed to fish the skull out with a stick. Once they realised what it was, they quickly put it back and all agreed that they wouldn't tell anyone. They'd keep it a secret and... They weren't telling anyone, they were just going to keep it to themselves because they didn't know what else that, to do at that time. They were pretty young, I think. However, moving on from this, the youngest boy, Tommy Willis, actually couldn't keep it a secret and he ended up telling his dad. Now, this little boy literally felt too uncomfortable. He couldn't keep it a secret. He had to tell someone. So he told his dad and his dad actually ended up ringing the police to report it to the police. And obviously the police turned around to the dad and said that the following morning they would go and investigate. Obviously at that time I don't think um, crimes were took action there and then. I think it was more, I, I will deal with it the next day. Um, probably when the lighting was better because obviously in those times they didn't have the equipment and technology that we have today. So the following morning the police went to investigate this witch arm tree and they actually discovered in the hole of the tree a whole skeleton and a severed hand which was near the tree as well. Now in this tree there was clothing, there was a shoe and a gold wedding ring. Now due to the body decaying in the tree all of the things that was in there actually managed to rot away as well. And it is also said that there was a cloth that was actually put into the woman's mouth. I don't know when this would have happened, but I pre presume it would have been in the lead up to her death. So the forensic examination of this was actually given to Professor James Webster, who at the time was head of the Forensic Home Office Science Laboratory in the West Midlands. And from this, he'd recently set up the Science Laboratory in Birmingham University. Now, for anyone that watched this, I know some of my friends watch my videos. Shout out to them for supporting me. <laughs> um, but a lot of them will know where Birmingham University is and will know that it's quite close to home. This is why this topic really interests me because I like things that are close to home. I actually kind of think like, it, it, it's just interesting. It's an interest I have and something so close to home to think happened so many years ago Usually you think this day and age, you think all oh, that happened like in a different country or so far away. But this was so close to home. It just it just intrigued me to know what what actually happened and how the woman ended up in the situation. So on the examination, James actually figured out that the woman had been dead for about 18 months and had actually given birth at least once in her lifetime of being alive. Um, he also claimed that she would have been around 35 with mousy brown hair and irregular teeth along the bottom of her jaw, which makes her stand out to an extent 
in terms of not everyone has your regular teeth on the bottoms of the drawer so you would think that someone would pick up on this when it was published in newspapers and journals and articles however no one did so this professor james actually determined the cause of the woman's death was asphyxiation now if you're not like me and you don't watch a lot of crime documentaries you won't know what this means now this is basically suffocation this woman was potentially suffocated and just having her body deprived of oxygen which isn't the nicest way to go but that's supposedly what he claimed happened to this woman now days weeks even months went by and no one reported a woman of this description missing in the local area or for anywhere for that matter and this therefore led the authorities to believe that this woman was actually a stranger to the local area so no one knew her no one knew of her she was just a stranger in the local area however there was one clue from the vicinity of hagley and it came in a form of a report from an executive of an industrial company who in nine, july, july of 1941 was actually walking home to his lodging where he was staying and he was walking through um Hagley Green now as he was walking through he actually heard um a woman's scream come from Hagley Wood now as he carried on walking he came by another man who was walking in the opposite direction to him this man was a school teacher and this man confided in this other man and actually said I just heard those screams as well so these men phoned the police and the police turned up they did a search but they didn't find anything now note this was 20 months before the body was found by these boys putting two and two together you would think that this could have been a credible clue in terms of what happened to the woman this could have been the woman being murdered in my personal opinion i think that had the police done a successful job of investigating they would have found the woman and they would have maybe been able to prevent it these are just my opinions guys um read up on it if you want think what you like but this is just my opinion um i believe that if the police had have done a bit more investigating a bit more digging into that wood they may have found her a bit sooner so moving on to around christmas of 1943 there was actually graffiti going around on um, empty buildings in the West Midlands and this graffiti was saying things like who put Bella in the witch elm tree now you'd think that for people to comment these things on like public buildings that someone must know something or this is the person that did it however that wasn't the case the police actually managed to find the person that was doing this and it turned out to just be some guy that was having a bit of fun mocking the situation which obviously isn't very nice and it's the wrong thing to do but they literally just it was a dead it was a dead lead it was a dead end um this guy i don't know whether he was arrested at the time i presume he was um like i said read up on it if you want and comment in the comments what you've discovered about it so moving on to the first theory of this it comes from a professor called margaret murray who believed the severed hand that was next to the tree was actually a form of black magic linking it to the hand of glory now the hand of glory is when the hand is cut off at midnight and it's cut off the body of a criminal now this hand is said to possess powerful magic and it's used to protect its owner from evil spirits so whether professor murray was referring to this woman as being a criminal or someone that had done something bad in the past who knows so this second theory guys actually comes from the same professor margaret murray who believed that the spirit of a dead witch can be prevented from causing harm by being imprisoned in the hollow of a tree so again she's kind of inferring that this unknown woman was a witch hence how she ended up in the hollow of the tree in the first place um no one knew this woman so no one knew if she was a witch if she was a criminal um i'm about to get into the third theory which is by far my favorite so keep watching guys 
So this third theory is definitely my favourite, guys, and it happened in 1953, 10 years after the body was found. Now, this theory came in the form of a letter, and it was sent to the Wolverhampton Express and Star, and it was um, addressed to the pr professor, the Lieutenant Colonel Wilfred Wyford Jones. Weird name, I know. Now, this man had actually previously written articles about this woman and her murder. Now, the sender of this letter claimed to name herself Anna Clavery, and she claimed to have information on this woman and the woman's death. Now, she claimed that during the war, where this woman was murdered, there was a spy ring that was sending information to the Luftwaffe in Germany. Now, I remember learning about that in history in GCSE or A-level. Can't remember what it is now. Look it up if you want. Um, so there was a spy ring where this woman was murdered and this woman claimed that the woman that was murdered basically knew too much information so she needed to be killed basically now i find this interesting because she's kind of informing that this woman was a previous spy in england from germany and she had to be killed because she knew too much information so the fourth theory is that she was pregnant by a soldier and was taken into the woods to be disposed of now i didn't really read much up on this one i just read it and i thought i'm going to include it because it's different like obviously given the time frame of when it happened with the war it would make sense but where was the baby was the baby born and then she was taken to be killed the mom the professor professor said that she had given birth once already so is that child out there that doesn't know who the mom was that's questionable and then the other theory is that she was a gypsy now this theory has been rejected by the police because during the time that it happened, there was said to be gypsies camping around this area. However, her clothes that were found in the tree were actually said to be completely different to what gypsies were wearing at the time. So obviously being rejected by police, it does kind of add up and make sense. I think my personal favourite would be the German spy one. I find that so fascinating. Um, I don't really agree with the gypsy one or the being pregnant by a soldier. I mean, the soldier one will probably more likely add up seeing as she'd given birth once already but yeah comment down below what you think happened to the woman well not happen but what what theory do you believe in the most so guys that is it for today's video i tried to do something a bit different i really hope you enjoyed it if you did like it please give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel and if you want more of these videos i can happily do more whether it's conspiracy theories unsolved murders let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next